Well, thanks for the introduction. I'm here with Christina, as you know, uh, associate here at NPRGD, and we will share with you a few of our uh, visions and a bit of our, about our practice here at NPRGD with beyond border, border collaborations. So this ties very much into what uh, Robert was talking about, about uh, the borderless strategic perspective. And the idea that we want to bring today is how that can work in three different scales. So we bring examples of the international scale or, or of collaboration, also the regional scale in, within the same nation and the city scale, uh, which is a little bit more local. So we want to start with uh, Luxembourg in transition. This is a competition that we are currently doing. We are on phase two of three of this process. And it was a, a, an invitation to think about how can Luxembourg and the functional area around it, the other countries that are also around it, can actually achieve a zero carbon reality and resilient to climate change by 2050. So with that in hand, uh, we started from an approach that is very much centered in the notion that there are certain regimes or practices that you have to stop doing and actually phase out and certain uh, emerging initiatives that actually need to be empowered to, to become the new regime that are more sustainable. But for you to actually uh, achieve that, uh, the first thing that, that needs to happen for that transition is that communication or how we had like on the word cloud, the language, the, the dialogue, right? And that has to, to happen across borders and across levels. And um, here we show like the different levels of collaboration, like the municipalities that uh, compose the functional area, which is uh, pretty much an abstract area, not necessarily an administrative area. And then the greater region, which is the actual administrative area um, boundary of this whole uh, uh, place, this whole dynamics. And of course, Europe and the world, which feel also the effect of whatever decisions and practices we have. So the, for, for taking this cross-border challenge in hand, we looked at into five themes, uh, energy, water, mobility, and waste. But our idea was to broaden the research question beyond zero carbon and beyond uh, each of these themes individually and start crossing uh, the disciplines and bringing everything together into the map, uh, if you will, or if, into the space. Because this is a classic example of why we shouldn't look into only one theme or only one country. For instance, uh, Luxembourg with its functional area, it generates a lot of mobility, a lot of commuting across the borders. But even if you turn all of these cars into electric, you are emitting zero carbon, but you're still trapped on a traffic jam. So um, what is the benefit of, of that change, of that transition? for uh, people's lives and how can you actually bring that as a contribution for other themes. So for instance, uh, water, in this whole region, uh, there are two big basins and water is being brought from basically one spot 50 kilometers away from the point where water is actually being consumed, which is a really long distance for you to, to transport it. And that also reflects the fact that um, if you are sealing the soil on the area that is, for instance, within Luxembourg, the flooding and the effects of that soil sealing will be felt in Germany or in France, because this is the flood area uh, risk that you have along the, the river course. And in the same time, like if you establish a relationship in which uh, part, a big portion of your territory is producing meat and, uh, and another portion that is far away is produce, producing fruit and vegetables, you start creating the necessity of this exchange that is not resilient. Uh, for instance, for, with now that with the COVID uh, crisis and the corona challenges that we have been having, Luxembourg suffered a lot because uh, with the collaboration across the borders, workers that harvest crops across the border every day couldn't come to actually make this production or to, to, to spin economy or, or even living in these areas. Uh, energy production, we're all talking about the energy transition, but the, the, the potential, it looks like in this map, if you look at the map on the right, you see a really intense red on the German part. This is clean energy potential. Uh, the wind is not so much different in the north of Luxembourg. 
but it's the governance, the priorities, the policy, the communication. How do you make everything uh, within this territory actually work on the same way? As, you, as, as uh, Joachim mentioned, you have to go upstream. You have to start looking for big solutions for these really big problems. So this is what we are trying to do with Luxembourg, like crisscross all the themes, look how and where in space do they coincide and bring strategic interventions that are actually site specific and start seeing how you can do uh, small changes in the local, but like big changes on the really large scale. If you multiply them across the territory, how can you start um, creating an example and also uh, knowledge that you can export to other cities, other systems that collaborate on the same in a similar way. So the same idea of these integral plans that, uh, as Joachim mentioned, how to have a larger scale vision, but then really to um, activate change in multiple ways on a, on a local scale is also applied in our um, competition uh, entry for Brazilian by Design in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area, which is a whole region we looked into. And actually in the first place, looking mostly into uh, uh, talking with the local communities about um, what are the issues in their place? Uh, what, are, um, what are current uh, concerns? What are uh, actually initiatives that are already existing? We we're learning from actually the citizens are living there and also the authorities at the same time with the same group, you know, as a dialogue. Um, of course, we also um, had a look at the data and under, uh, started to understand the interdependencies of different issues within the area, not just sea level rise, flooding, but also wildfires, evacuation issues, uh, infrastructure, and mostly also the fragmented, uh, fragmented situation uh, regarding policies and collaboration within this whole region, which is quite ex like much worse, let's say, than, than maybe we are dealing with in Europe here and there. So that all these issues together, they sort of form this uh, downward spiral in this region. And uh, after a lot of discussions with many stakeholders, we uh, figured that uh, one uh, larger scale strategy could be to, um, to create more, more robust uh, infrastructure networks in this area to build uh, resilience over time in a collaborative way. So, you know, uh, having initiatives in all communities that all together work towards creating a network and a system that is much more stable in case of emergency or in case of changes than the current very fragile loop system that is in place. So for this um, larger regional network idea, we developed a prototype, which is consisting of what we call connectors that are streets or creeks that we would uh, in an integral way design for new mobilities, for water buffers, to include amenities for the communities and so forth that could connect uh, the, um, the uh, uphill uh, communities with the Bay Area or the, the Bay Front actually. actually. And uh, combined with these are combined with uh, community spaces, uh, public spaces that are adaptable, that can um, offer orientation in case of emergency, offer space for um, evacuation and uh, yeah, emergency help. At the same time, buffer water, but also offer like orientation and community places for the for the people living in the areas on normal, like daily life basis. Let's say. And this prototype idea, we then started to discuss with one specific community as a sort of a test case, which was South San Francisco. You see here up in the upper left corner, the map uh, as the first starting point, we started to open a little pavilion where people could come and map, um, I don't know, historic events or places they like, they love, you know, or things where they uh, thought, uh, you know, adaptation could happen. And we started talking with uh, schools and all kinds of uh, community members. And in parallel also uh, looked into uh, digital tools to uh, foster co-design, you know, to our design practice, for example, provide um, catalogs of initial ideas that were, you know, random maybe. And through a dialogue, we could figure out is this a crazy idea or not, uh, which, uh, which ones are actually founded uh, or, or could be interesting for these communities. And then bit by bit, we could develop these designs together and also visualize uh, in AR, for example, how it could look like in the future. And so this, we could actually customize this prototype with the community and uh, uh, make sure that through these local upgrades, these local interventions, bit by bit, the regional um, 
a robust uh, network could be built over time. And on the level of a mu single mu municipality, uh, we wanted to share with you the example of our supervision uh, in Eindhoven, um, where we act actually uh, work on the city center um, uh, area, an existing yeah, very important part of the city, of course. Here we collaborate with different departments of the municipality, making a, a vision for how to green uh, the city, how to transform the public space in that, um, yeah, within that vision and how to densify uh, in, in, uh, in an integral way, uh, the city center. Uh, so this integral vision consists of, uh, I, of the idea to uh, make the city center that you see on the left as a sort of a hinge uh, between these uh, landscapes uh, that surround Eindhoven. That's sort of the missing link uh, in the sense, uh, like spatially in this case, um, to say, okay, this becomes part of the national park of Eindhoven. And that means something, quite something, for how the city would develop into this green uh, park, basically, even in the center. And uh, we also integrate uh, uh, the uh, a strategy on how densification can contribute to greening the city, to making more and more active at the same time, and to change the monofunctionality of the city as it is, and um, also add interesting spaces for the city to grow, while fostering, for example, as well, water storage. Um, and we communicate that in very simple ways. We have set up 10 basic principles and uh, the core is here on the left. As you see, there's, there's a set of um, ideas and design guidelines that we developed together with the municipality that are now anchored in legal documents. Uh, so we give each initiative in the city a little leaflet of 1A4 uh, explaining these 10 ideas. And with this, we invite them to participate in exploring the ideas and making them more diverse. And um, at the same time, we also ask a con contribution from each larger development to actually uh, finance as well these upgrades that we are aiming at for green for public space in the city. We do this to dialogue in ateliers. Every month we meet with whoever has ideas for the city and uh, discuss them and help them uh, to get them a step further to fit to this vision. And we also monitor the ideas to, uh, through 3D tools and also sometimes ARs in public events uh, to, to communicate and show what can happen and what is, what, how the city can transform. And you already start to see examples like in build form, like on the left, uh, some nice diverse uh, architectures are, this, uh, are in the city and also the public spaces are being transformed uh, with a lot of effort also from the municipality. And all this uh, uh, will hopefully contribute uh, uh, after a uh, longer term towards making the city more resilient, the city center more green, but also offering water buffer, cooling, um, places, uh, places to, you know, places for leisure, places for biodiversity, and also jobs. So all together forms this integral vision for the city center that we build together with uh, everybody in the city that uh, has uh, ideas and wants to, uh, yeah transform the city. So with these three examples, we wanted to show you how we are actually, it, it was very nice you are in this presentation because we are actually working, I think in the same spirit. We wanted to show you how we do this on several levels, several scales with stakeholders involved and how we try to really get these smaller projects off the ground that actually um, add to overall transformation and uh, change. Thanks a lot. <laughs>